Fair enough. And so it, just in that theme, uh, not so much for story and mouthwash, but actually um, novel targeted agents, I mean, what are, as everybody's thoughts on palbociclin? Um, I know there's some very exciting phase two data that was presented um, so, about a year ago, actually, at the San Antonio uh, in uh, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. Uh, Joyce, stuff. do you have any comments on palbociclin? Yeah, it's a really exciting new drug with a novel target, you know, with the uh, CDK4-6 inhibitors and really looks broadly active in ER-positive disease. Importantly, it's also got very substantial activity in HER2-positive disease. And these inflammatory patients that are presented here all have amplicons or deletions that are really activating the CDK4-6. And again, that was lapatinib that helped them out. But at any rate, there's a group of these patients that um, in HER2-positive disease that really have activation of that pathway and may be resistant as a result. So this is a really, really exciting new um, Agent, there are other, other, a couple of other compounds, you know, Novartis and Lilly both have both excellent agents that are also in trials. So this is really, really an important set of trials that we need to get done. And it, it is actually quite interesting because it is exactly the kind of drug trial design that we all want to see and haven't, except for in HER2 uh, and a little bit in ER. But, uh, you know, the Finn and colleagues at UCLA looked at a bunch of cell lines and basically showed that the drug was more effective in the more proliferative ER positives that they had in cell lines and HER2 positive, but not in the basal-like tumors and then some other small subsets. But uh, then they did a phase two trial and they tried it both in all comers, first line ER positive and in the group that had the amplification of uh, cyclin dependent kinase and, you know, by, and, and protein expression. So two different groups didn't see any difference, at least on their preliminary data. But we all got so excited. And I have to say they only have half of the events they need. And we've all been very excited because the progression-free survival was, you know, three and a half times longer uh, in the experimental arm. So the phase three trial opened in February of this year, and it's accrued more than a quarter of the patients already in multi-center uh, trial design. Uh, very interesting, two-to-one randomization, extremely well tolerated, neutropenia being really the only toxicity to, of note that we've seen. And they have another trial open in the second line setting with fulvestrin. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what happens uh, with that drug in the next year. Any other comments on palbociclib before we go on? No? I will say, having worked with another CD4K6, the Novartis's LEEE, um, from our phase one unit, just as a single agent um, in some of my refractory ER positive breast cancers, that I've seen remarkable chest wall regressions. So I think it's really very active as a single agent. It's going to be combined um, with their... Uh, alpha-specific PI3 kinase, the uh, BYL719. And it sounds, Joyce, if I heard you correctly, that there may be a biomarker, amplification of the CDK4 or CD6? Um, you know, it, in the ER positive, they looked and those patients benefited, but so did everybody else with the ER positive yeah. disease. So it's one of those things where right. it may be more yeah. about proliferation because, of course, the CDK4 or 6 is very involved in, in, in proliferation down, downstream. But um, in HER2 positive, we'll have to see, because we already do so well with HER2 positive, we'll need to find a more refractory population. Um, so anyway, there's going to be a study. UT Southwestern is going to be taking the lead on a trial of TDM1 with um, LEE011. You know, so yeah, they're going to take the lead on that one. So that'll be a nice, nice trial. Mm -hmm. Great.